some people might wonder about how we teach numeracy or early maths in these early years in a radio-inspired school. Our national curriculum asks, quite wisely, that we do this in a constructivist way and also in an emergent way as it happens in play. In this little excerpt from a morning meeting this week with my class of 45 year olds, we uh, investigated the concept of numbers, numeracy, and also to see uh, what the children know, if they know how to write the number one and what the concept of one actually means, meaning that it's one thing. And then also how to sequence these different numbers, uh, one, two, three. Well, doing this in a group has many advantages because the children can learn from each other what they know, share their knowledge and intelligence about numeracy. And so in actual fact, there's not just one teacher in the room, but many. And each children bring their own knowledge to bear into this co-created learning story about numeracy. <laughs> you also notice that nothing without joy, as Lawrence Malaguzzi said. We're not going to sit children in front of charts and flashcards and teach them about numbers. They're going to have a very real, very joyful experience of early maths in a group with friends. You'll also notice that in this lesson I chose not to talk and issue instructions and tell children to match and sort and sequence. These are all mathematical skills, but I didn't want this to be a teacher-directed activity. So you can hear um, in the background, I'm whistling, I'm whistling, I guess, instructions or feeling tones or um, a response to what they're doing, but I'm leaving the children to construct, in fact, to co-construct their mathematical knowledge together as a group with just my small input in the form of a whistle. And yet, even without that direct teacher input, you'll notice such amazing, incredible learning here because of the power of this learning group. Also, look at how I'm including music in the language of maths. So, whistling up on the scale as we count one, two, three on the scale. Children do not learn in compartments. They don't have a maths file and a music file. You know, their brains are wired and cross-wired across all languages. And notice how the children are being allowed to discover for themselves these mathematical concepts. No one has told them match all the things that are black or find all the buckets and order them from smallest into biggest. They are burning their own pathways in their brain and discovering for themselves the potential of this material or this puzzle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At the stage of the lesson, you could call it, uh, I noticed that the children were still very, very interested in what we were doing and so I decided to extend this activity Tommy, do you agree into with me, uh, sort of a matching Drum sorting sticks. game do you agree? where yes. the children huh? could for example match a leaf with a tree or um, a chair with a table. Uh, 
you talk to? Working as a group once again offers a lot of opportunity for dialogue and difference. Interesting. This could go on the ironing board too. And that leaves yours, Alice. Well done, Alice. Taka, what do you think yours is? It's important to remember in a classroom that every child is unique. Every child has a different thinking strategy. Every child has different experience that they bring to bear on a common task like And it's really important to know that the leaf does not always go with the tree. That the leaf maybe would like to go with a flower or perhaps something like a ladybird, depending on the child and their way of thinking and their perspective on the world. See where you think it could go and why. Why could Tallulah's one, this one here, why could oh, that? Steering wheel. Ah, do you agree, Tallulah? Yes. Ah, well done, everybody. We did card number one together. Hooray! And I think seeing difference and diversity of thinking and problem solving as an asset to a class can be an amazing way to learn maths for young children.